I see it's 10.30. It's time to get going, I guess. Uh, call a meeting to order. Is there any additions to the agenda? Anybody has? Sure go live. I think it works. Where? Sorry. <laughs> if not, it's going to accept the agenda. I can move to accept the agenda. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. Carried. Adoption of minutes. I can, I can move the minutes. All in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. Carried. Accounts for payment. Anybody have any questions on them or? If not, somebody want to accept them? Just one question real quick. Jason just explained to us the leafy spurge cost there. It's for bugs, right? Yes. And we get the bugs from somebody and we distribute them in the MDE where the leafy spurge is bad. Every year we work with uh, Ag Canada and um, out of the Lethbridge Research Station and they work with us and many other municipalities around the south here and they've just started working their way up into the northern or more central provinces or municipalities in doing bug distribution so so they do biocontrol agents for leafy spurge, um, thistles are some of them, hound's tongue, uh, they're into many other things along with that, but we've been working with leafy spurge in the river bottom for a lot of years, so uh, that's the cost of them. Monitoring sites, they monitor a number of sites every year and they watch and see how they progress and then they also release 10 sites for us every year, so. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? I can give you the motion to accept the accounts for payment. Thank you, uh, all in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Carried. Uh, months of reports. All right, so. Been a couple of months since since we met, but uh, standard same every year in the in the process over the summertime. Uh, our phones ring constantly, and people stopping into the office asking questions. Uh, uh, still a lot of interest about trees and uh, the program that we have plant, created here at the MD Tabor for for planting and help with the trees. So, so that was good. A lot of park questions coming at us. And um, as we move down, we're working with the Alberta Recycling Pilot Program. I have another um, Zoom call this afternoon with them where we'll finalize and, and uh, Alberta Recycling has now gone into recycling just about everything that has a battery or a cord. And so that's an awful lot of items. And uh, we're, we're hopping in on that program with everybody else in the province. So, so anyways, so right now we're collecting TVs and computers and things of that nature. Now we'll add everything else basically. So. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <clears throat> so where, if I had a TV or something, where would you take it to a shop? Where did where? Uh, our three municipal landfills, oh, the have landfill. sites. Um, you're going to probably from here to Town of Tabor's landfill is probably the closest site for for you guys as councillors. I guess I have a question when it comes to recycling. I have a question as well on uh, used oil. Um, is there any place in the MD that's accepting used oil? All right, a lot of stuff has changed uh, early this spring with used oil, and the places that the companies that were collecting it are now charging for it, and it's costing a fair bit. So, any places that were in the town of Tabor that were collecting used oil, 
have quit doing it because it's cost them money. And uh, to, so to answer your question, we have a used oil public site, Grassy Lake, at our greater shop. And we also have a used oil site at Enchant at our landfill. I'm wondering if we don't need to have a discussion with the town of Tabor. So my understanding is that there's been some dumping of, uh, quite a bit of dumping of oil because there's no place for people to take it now. And so I don't know if we need to have a conversation with the town of Tabor to find uh, a solution to that. Because that's not, uh, with no place to take it, that's where it's going to end up is in our borough pits. <coughs> When's our next IDP meeting? We don't have one. It's, get, like it's not on the books yet. Okay, we should probably add that one to the, an agenda item. Yeah, we can do that. <coughs> oh, okay. Just recently. It, it would be nice to have a community site here, but knowing that there's a cost to it now, so but it does need to go somewhere. And they used to pay for it, now they charge for it, eh? Yeah, yeah, I think they used to give us 25 cents a liter, and now it's, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's mileage to get there to the, to the containment site, and so much a liter. So what, do you know what the rationale is for the change in policy from these people that were collecting it? to picking it up and, and paying for it to now charging? Is it the change in oil price? Is that what's done it? In that in the recycled has very little value because the, I guess the fresh oil is so much cheaper. Yeah, the change came simultaneously this spring when um, oil went into the negatives. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it just coincided along with the same, so. All right, so our staffing has uh, stayed the same. Right now, they're all starting to go back to school, so that'll be different um, next month with the change of your three, three summer staff. ASB grant, as of the last time, uh, about a week and a half ago that I visited with, our, with Brian Verdura, we hadn't seen our grant filled out yet or sent in. Let me rephrase that our grant received from the government. So roadside spraying, we have uh, sprayed every road and even a couple of roads twice now. Um, and of course, like always at this time of year, you're seeing the kosha still growing when air and nothing else is. So standard operating <laughs> procedure. Unfortunately, it's frustrating. <coughs> um, also, we've sprayed a few portions of uh, Alberta transportation highways for them. So tree spraying, um, late spring, but uh, with the spring rains and some of them being fairly heavy rains, we haven't had much need or call for tree spraying. We think uh, the rain knocked a lot of the bugs out of the trees. So that's our guess, but uh, you did notice the big um, City of Lethbridge publication that came out last week, week and a half ago, about Dutch Elm disease. And uh, we have to be mindful of what we're doing in our municipality. It continues to come closer and closer from the east. It's been working its way west. And uh, City of Lethbridge had a couple of trees with it. So certainly would be devastating if we got it here and lost all of our elm trees. So, so anyways, yeah, certainly that's coming. Hopefully not for many more years though, but, uh, and then into our, our weeds and our spot spraying and stuff that we find around the municipality. Um, no different than any other year we, we find new patches and we actually get lucky and we get rid of some patches. So, so anyways, we're, we're finding stuff all over the place. A lot of it's wildlife carrying or, or, uh, 
Not too much. I don't believe wind, but most of it's wildlife moving stuff around. So, because it's all attributed to the fence lines and under power lines and things of that nature. So, and then uh, our grass seeding, we'll start in on that here next month, falling in behind the construction crew. And our mowing, we finished mowing and uh, now we have stars again, so we're, I believe, out in the far southeast corner right now, so uh, working our way back. So uh, tree removal and brush removal out of our ditches and right of ways, uh, we, we chewed that list down pretty good come springtime and this time of year it's getting fairly long again, so. So it'll keep us busy throughout the winter time. In our soil conservation area, um, three rate payers, I've stopped in to visit them and we've talked about some of their soil erosion problems that they have. So anyways, we'll watch and cross your fingers that they do a better job this winter, but last fall wasn't a great year to put land to bed in a, in a good order, so. Then we had a boatload of uh, surveys that we did and conducted for Alberta agriculture, and uh, we've finished all of those up now. So, and um, grasshoppers, you know, the municipality's got little patches of grasshoppers. Uh, our municipality's not near as bad as other municipalities have it right now, but uh, yeah, it just comes and goes with the weather. So. But uh, we'll get all these results back here, I'm going to guess, somewhere around Christmas time, the new year, of all these other th surveys that we've done. So, And then some of the dates that we have. So um, we also have a report coming back from, from Alberta Agriculture when Alan spent the day with me. So I'm guessing that to show up. Christmas time also, I'm, I'm not sure when that report will come. And uh, we have nailed down November 19th for that mental health class or afternoon course. And uh, then you have provincial conference in January, but uh, it's gonna be run over a video conference. So I'm sure by then, um, I don't know what RMA's got planned, but uh, we'll, f we'll see how they're planning on doing it. So our fieldman training the beginning of December is also the same way over video conference. So, And then I have just as of yesterday finished up um, making dates for our farmer pesticide course this winter. And uh, so we've got that because the calls are coming in pretty steady for, for that. So we'll get those advertised and to everybody. So is that gonna be hand, um, done online or is it gonna be done live? It, it'll be live. Um, we're actually gonna cap it to I believe 12. I'm, I'm sitting on 12 right now as a number and we'll do it at our shop mm -hmm. in the training room and uh, we'll Cross your fingers, that works good, so. What about this, <clears throat> excuse me, what about the South Zone uh, ASB conferences? Is there gonna be one this year? Um, next week, we have a regional fieldman meeting and we'll find out what's going on with that because I haven't heard a word about it, so. So yeah, it's on the agenda for next week, so. Any other question, John? Yeah, I've got another question on the Ag Plastics pilot. How's that going so far? Um, have we shipped any loads out? Uh, two, well, probably three weeks ago now, our first semi-load of, of uh, grain bags left the yard. And uh, we've probably got just about another semi-load sitting there at this moment, so. So yeah, it uh, went pretty flawless. The big truck came in and 
we filled it up and away it went again. So I haven't heard another word back, so I guess they accepted it. Is it mostly just bulk, or is there actually some weight to it? Like, is there, is it, a, I mean, a 30-ton oh, load or a 40-ton? There's some weight to it. We had one guy that was brand new at rolling bags, and he used his round baler. And when he brought it in, he was telling me the story about round baling. A lot of people up central Alberta round bale that stuff. They just started in the round baler and bale it up. And anyways, he was telling me he had his baler or his tractor on idle while he was feeding this stuff in. And the tractor stalled out. <laughs> and so he, he says, I don't know why the tractor stalled out. Anyways, then he was kicking that bale out and it was way over 3,000 pounds. Eh? So, <sighs> so anyways, we have a bale sitting over there <laughs> that is the size of a hay bale, but it's it Good needs a real eh? piece of machinery to lift it. So. Okay, have a payloader to lift it. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, I know better for next time. I'm not feeding that much. In <laughs> Pretty smart. Yeah. The way you're doing things. Yeah. So, and, and we have, lot, have lots of calls. And uh, I just talked to a fellow from the feedlot uh, yesterday. And I says, you know, we do baler twine. And he goes, you'll recycle baler twine? I says, yeah. I says, bring, put it in a tote, a mini tote bag, and uh, bring it into us. He says, you know how much twine we got? I says, yeah, we'll take it all. And so anyways, he says, all right, that's good to know, because we got lots of tote bags around here that we don't know what to do with either. So, so the word's slowly getting out. Uh, we put another advertisement or another newsletter article in the newsletter, so hopefully people will see it and it get passed along. So... There will be a few more grain bags on the ground this year, I believe. I, I think there'll be lots of grain bags this year because of the, the good uh, dry land crops. Any other questions? Does anyone want to accept the report? I'll move the monthly report as accepted <clears throat> as read. All in favor? In favor. favor. In favor. Carried. Uh, correspondence. All right, I, I see this uh, care has come in here and um, I traditionally go to that every fall for a couple of days. It's in southern Alberta. The spring session of it is usually way up in northern Alberta. But it's based on uh, landfills and uh, tippy stations, mm -hmm. all the stuff that has to do with that kind of information. When I was looking at the agenda for that, I seen the Sewa has a location that they may potentially have. Yeah, I see it's a different area now than they've then, talked for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that interested me on the, on the agenda was that. So I'd be curious to see what comes back from that. into the Farm Safety Center. Before we jump ahead to the Farm Safety Center, I'll make a motion to accept the Alberta huh. Care Conference's information. Right. Was there <laughs> anyone who wanted to attend from this board or able to attend? All in favor? In favor. In favor. favor. Carried. Okay, the Farm Safety Center. It's just a letter from Farm Safety Center saying thank you for the MD's donation. So for information. I can move to accept the Farm Safety Center letter as presented. 
Thank you. All in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. Carried. Email from AAAF. All right. I, I provided this to you as a board for um, information. I don't know how much emails you're getting across from the rest of the province. Um, we know this early spring, Alberta agriculture took uh, fusarium off the pest list. The peace country is not happy, the peace region, that they did that. And uh, this is a letter that was going around saying that uh, Farmers have the opportunity to pull out of their uh, barley commissions and wheat commissions and things like that because they haven't supported them. Because the commissions, all those commissions were at the table of the Fusarium Action Committee. So. A, a letter for information, basically. <laughs> we'll give you the motion to accept the letter for information. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? In favor. favor. Carried. Other business. It's that time of the year for uh, bursaries. So we've got a, a few of them here this year. How many do we normally give out, Jason, in every year? Um, the first line says up to four. Up to four. Okay. Maximum. The Vauxhall School has a school counselor there that is, um, <laughs> um, visits with me somewhat regularly. And, uh, anyways, this is the results of this. So. What is the deadline for uh, accepting applications? August 31st. August 31st. Yesterday. It's on the website so, and available. So, I mean, I think it's great if, if one of the counselors got on it and those students got on it, it's good. You so, bet. you know, and for whether they're from one region or not, that's still nice to see. <laughs> I guess we have what we have for applications and up to a maximum of four. So what do you guys want to do? I can give you a motion to accept all four applications. Can we accept a for each one? Okay. okay. I'll give you a motion for Jamie Bloker. Thank you. All in favor of that one? In favor. In favor. In favor. Carried. I can give you the motion to accept the bursary application from Paulina Reimer. All in favor? In favor. In favor. In Carried. favor. I can give you a motion for to accept Joshua Huvenars. Thank you. All in favor? In favor. In favor. Carried. In favor. I'll move that we accept Christy Hammersley, uh, her bursary application as well. All in favor? In favor. In favor. Carried. Anything else? Anything else, Jason? I don't know. Do you have any questions? Anything you want to, uh, want to know? Park's been busy this year. Park has been busy this year, minus the slow start. But uh, once everybody got rolling, it's a pretty busy place. So, I guess I have one more question on the egg plastic. So um, how long is this... Uh, pilot supposed to run? Is it supposed to run a year or two years or, or what is the, I guess, how's this, how's this going to look in the end? Or do you have an idea? It, uh, the, the pilot program's scheduled to run two years, but uh, up north I understand that they've just added another couple of municipalities or another couple places for, for pickup. So as they're going and they're seeing where their holes are, they're adding spots. But uh, um, as this gets rolling and other municipalities around us uh, get involved or, or are allowed to get involved, um, 
I, I see some of our stuff moving back to landfills, but I have a struggle with that because um, our landfill operators are older and um, don't quite have the ability or the agility to do the stuff that we do at the shop with uh, our crew of guys with that stuff. So, but uh, we'll watch and see. We've learned quite a bit already the last number of months, especially when the truck came to pick it up and we visited with the truck driver and stuff. So um, I had the ag plastics guy there a week before they came to pick it up and he walked around the pile and we talked and I showed him our, sh our binder twine pile and and uh, stuff so yeah we're, we're learning lots as as we're working our way through this program so should we become a permanent site is there any cost that would be uh, on the municipality to set that site up or are we pretty much there already is there, is there going to be a need for a, maybe a chain link compound for to keep stuff in there or is there no possibility of uh, stuff blowing around i guess when it comes rolled up to us, it's not blown anywhere. Um, and, and the need for large amounts of land, um, once we have a semi load, once we have so many bags, a, a semi will carry roughly about 96 bags, give or take. So once we have 100 bags, make a phone call and they're here in a few days and they're gone. So, so needing a site that is many acres, we don't need that. We, we just need enough room to keep enough bags for a truckload and make a phone call and get them gone. I think uh, the Tabor Shooting Foundation wants to thank your crew for keeping the yards mowed out there this summer. You did an All excellent right. job. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? I should have asked this before, but how do you, how does the minister determine that fruitarium is removed from the pest act? You can ask me that question when the light's red. Okay, that's fine. That's I I, I wondered that, and I was going to ask, and then I held back, and, and now I'm like I should have asked. The ag minister has a committee that is is directed, and I believe they're. Okay. I believe it's under the name of the Fusarium Action Committee. Okay. So that's where he was getting his direction from. All right. Just it seems in my time on council that, and on this committee, that that's been such a worry and a contentious weed that's caused lots of problems. And now to have it removed, I, I was surprised when I read that. It's created a lot of contention over an awful lot of years, you bet. Okay. And it's not done yet. Thank you. I guess if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.